Sai here from easycaters.com and I wanted to do just a uh, nice little back testing session with you today uh, with a <clears throat> kind of a price action and uh, volume analysis uh, day trading method that I've been developing uh, over the past several weeks. And so I'm just going to kind of dive into it. I mostly have been trading this on super liquid uh, stocks like MU. Um, it's just really tight spreads, um, huge amount of liquidity, a lot of public interest there. So it, it seems to uh, trend really well usually. And uh, anyway, so it just seems like a compatible symbol for this type of strategy. And so um, I've really lately reduced down the number of symbols that I'm willing to trade. I, I've tried to simplify and kind of um, eliminate variables. Um, I know that's one, um, one pitfall that a lot of traders fall into is um, uh, tracking way too many variables. And, uh, and I was uh, you know, no exception to that. <clears throat> uh, I you know, kind of got into an analysis paralysis type of situation where there's just so many things to look at that uh, you have trouble making a decision. And so I'm trying to slowly work my way out of that by just reducing the number of variables that I track in my trading and, um, and be able to make more effective decisions at that point and put risk on what I need to put risk on and so forth. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and dive into it here. Now what I, uh, what I use for this system is, um, you can see here I've got the uh, intraday, the daily VWAP. Um, volume weighted average price and three standard deviation bands around it kind of just as a gauge of intraday value um, so you uh, so you can kind of guess that things are getting oversold when you get down here to the third standard deviation second standard deviation that type of thing getting overbought when you're up to the second and third standard deviation on the uh, north side and you know things are kind of in balance uh, range bound when you're kind of in the middle uh, of the range here. Um, then I use a just an exponential moving average here of 10 periods as a just kind of a trending indicator. Um, basically I'm taking advantage of small intraday swings uh, just the, the main legs that you see here like this you know you, you kind of tracks along with the um, exponential moving average there and so this this MA is just just the trend indicator here, so you can see how well the uh, price is uh, is trending along that line. And if it's you know chopping through the line, then you know it's kind of a range bound type of thing that you want to be cautious in. So those are the main tools that I use: just the the VWAP standard deviations um, as a, a gauge of value of extension that type of thing, and how strong a trend is. And then also I use the um, exponential 10 moving average to uh, tell me kind of what the trend's looking like and if, you know, this is a healthy pullback or, you know, if it's a, a deeper pullback, that type of thing. And then I use the equal volume uh, functions in Thinkorswim uh, for the chart. And you can uh, access that by going to the style setting or the style menu and going to chart type equal volume. And um, this makes the bars, uh, it sets the bar's width based on its relative share volume. So this particular candle has about, um, you know, almost twice as much volume as this particular candle. And about three times as much volume as this candle. So it's kind of a relative volume gauge. Like you can see, this is a big chunk of volume. This is a big chunk of volume, big volume here, big volume here, and so forth. And so you can kind of see where um, a lot of people got interested, where a lot of people weren't interested, you know, where there was just not a lot of uh, action going on here in these tiny, tiny candles. Um, and you can kind of get a gauge of like stopping power you know, if you have a, a big extended move and then a huge candle like this, um, a lot of times that will 
uh, be the, at least the short term into a move. Uh, same thing here. And then on the upside, a lot of times you'll see squarer looking um, equivolume bars, uh, which indicate that there's some resistance there. And uh, so that might be the end of that move. Uh, but anyway, I use these as kind of a relative volume gauge, and then I also apply my own uh, proprietary relative shares per trade, or relative shares per tick indicator. Uh, it looks at each particular bar in this day and says, okay, over the past 10 days, did this bar do higher or lower volume than it is currently doing uh, on average? So is this current bar higher shares per trade than the past 10 days average shares per trade for this bar, or is it about, you know, is it more or less than that average? Uh, and so this, uh, the candle widths tell me uh, the amount of volume that happened. The coloration tells me um, how many shares per trade is happening for that amount of volume. So basically, uh, it's allowing me to see a, an extra dimension of volume that you might not get in normal analysis. And it, um, I use it as kind of a proxy for commitment. So whereas share volume might indicate uh, how much interest there is in a price level, um, the average shares per trade uh, reading might tell you how uh, how much commitment there is to that level. So if you see a lot of big orders happening at a particular level, you know, the, the shares per trade goes through the roof, is a lot higher than average, then you uh, might suspect, hey, some big accounts are placing orders here. These people are more intelligent than, than the average uh, Joe out there. Um, and so this might be a good level for me to get interested in as well. Or, or a good direction for me to be trading in if, you know, maybe there's a reversal happening or something like that. So it might tell you some uh, different information there. But anyway, so let's go ahead and get started with this. And uh, so you can see here, I've got, uh, I don't even know what day this is, Thursday the uh, 22nd of March. And so uh, I noticed this little candle, so I, I went ahead and started it here because this is, this is actually an entry signal for my system here. And what I look for is uh, a trend and for the stock to start uh, trending along with the moving average and uh, a pullback to the moving average, small, low volume candle, um, and uh, small range candle, preferably as well, and, uh, and that it's touching or crossing the moving average and uh, that it is the opposite color to the direction that we're going in. So this is a downtrend, so I want it to be a green candle, saying it's trying to go up, it's trying to go up, it's trying to go up, but it, it's in a downtrend, so the move is questionable. And so what I would do is enter on a stop limit order directly below the low of this candle, and put a stop uh, market above the candle as a stop loss, and so the stop limit would trigger me in if the trading action drops below here as it does. So this, this would trigger me in and I would expect to get a 1.5 to 2R move in my direction. And so I would go ahead and take target there. It looks like we have one, two down in here somewhere. And then we have a bit of a pullback but it doesn't touch the MA and it's a red candle so it's not not going to be an entry signal for me there. Um, we've got one that does touch the MA here. This could be a could be a valid entry signal if you uh, entered under the the low of this. Um, I'm already in a position. If I wasn't already in the position I might go ahead and take that. Got a small light volume down candle small up candle you notice down here this these are the uh, this is the commitment measure that i have the shares per trade and so we had a huge commitment right here when we broke down through this kind of low of this range and uh 
the shares per trade went through the roof. So that means bigger orders are being placed there. And the same thing here. And now we're having kind of this low commitment pullback. And it's also, if you can see on the, the width of the candles, not only is it low commitment down here, but it's also small widths, which mean low absolute volume or low relative volume. And so these are like uh, uh, igniting kind of candles, uh, igniting the move downward with a strong commitment and wide uh, candle bodies, meaning higher than normal volume. And then we have smaller than normal volume pullback here. So that is good to see for a downtrend continuation. So here's a valid signal here. I might go ahead and put a short underneath the bottom of this candle and another stop loss trail to right there. See if it triggers me in there. And so yeah, you could then also move it to the low of this candle since uh, it's also a valid entry candle and get triggered in right there at the low. And it looks like, so that continues. And it looks like we probably got one, maybe just squeaked out two R's there, maybe one and a half. Uh, we got a low volume pullback, low commitment pullback here. Um, let's see, this could be a valid entry here since it is touching the MA. Low volume pullback. It's the right context for a continuation. So, and it, and it does continue. <clears throat> so there's three entries in a row there. One, two, and uh, three. And uh, this one was a valid too. You would put the entry right below that candle, uh, but when it didn't get triggered immediately, you would then put it below the low of this candle, and then it did get triggered eventually here on this candle, so that would be another entry. Uh, and so those work really well, and you got multiple R's there. So we got a we got some interesting candles showing up here. So we're at the third standard deviation down here, and so this is getting extended. Uh, we've also got high volume, so we had some low volume moving us away from this range up here, um, uh, or low commitment bars. They're just average, average size orders uh, pushing it down. Um, but then we got kind of uh, a, a large volume, large commitment candle here, and then we had uh, just some sideways movement large volume, large commitment in the opposite direction. So this is kind of like what I would consider, this is potential stopping volume right here. This is potential uh, reversal type behavior. Um, and you can see that it does reverse up a little bit here. I don't know how far it's going to go. We'll see. Yeah, so this was kind of the, the bottom of this first little wave here, and it made a new uh, medium-term wave, it looks like. Uh, this one is above the MA. This is not something that I would take as a trigger. I would be waiting for more information. This one is a little bit more what I would look like look at for a, another entry uh, with the trend in the direction of the trend. However, it is a kind of a higher commitment bar down here. You can see uh, it's above average, so it's a little questionable. Um, I might take it or I might let it go, but in the context of this strong bar down with high commitment down, um, it might be worth a, uh, a shot. So let's just go ahead and take it. It, it. Since we have this stopping power down here, it's not as good of a trade and the, the risk to reward probably isn't as significant unless we can get back down to a um, uh, below these lows, but it might be worth at least a small position. And it looks like we've got range, and then triggers in, and does, there we go, and we break the low of the day. And no setups that I'm seeing here. Now we've got back up and we've touched the MA, so at this point this is a valid short again under this green candle. Um, let's see, we are extended we're below the second standard deviation, so it's not as attractive, but um, uh, but it is a valid entry. It also, it's also kind of a medium volume candle and uh, higher than average uh, commitment. So 
it's really not that ideal of an entry candle, but uh, it would probably be a valid signal if you wanted to take it. And see, you can see that the volume and the commitment really kicked in here. So it's like um, this was actually something that you could have taken as a counter trend trade because we had some high commitment here, low commitment or uh, low volume on the um, pullback here and touching the MA. So this would be kind of a reversal signal for a trend starting in the next direction. And I take those sometimes. Uh, what I would do is buy a, on a break over this red candle, since we would be presuming that this is going to be starting an uptrend because of this uh, igniting candle here. Uh, you would buy on a break above this red candle. Uh, but I, I missed that, so we'll skip that one for now. But yeah, that would be that would have been a nice move. Um, so now we've gone back up. We've almost tagged VWAP. We've kind of gotten up here to the point of control. Um, so I would still be watching right now. I if if I saw some more strength coming in, I would look to play a weak pullback again in the uh, long direction, uh, just similar to this type of action right here. Um, or if it gives us a lot of strength to the downside, then I would look for um, you know one of my continuation entries as well. So let's see what we have here. We got so we got real strong entry signal there, or real strong uh, contact signal there. Um, let's see here. I don't see an entry yet. Let's see what we got. So this is a green candle. So since we're at VWAP in a downtrend, I could potentially see taking this on a break under this green candle uh, as a reversal type entry, but I don't see a lot of strong context right here for a reversal yet in terms of volume commitment. So I would probably let that go. <clears throat> yeah, and so it's kind of ranging here. Now we got some volume commitment. So if I could find a low volume pullback into the moving average, then I might look to play a continuation short uh, with the presumption that this is just a deeper pullback. Um, outside of this overall downtrend. We'll see what we get here. There's a nice tiny green candle there, low commitment. Nobody's interested in buying it back up. And so that is a red, a green. That green touches, barely touches the moving average. I might be able to take that short. I think it touches. So yeah, I would probably take that short on the low under this. Uh, let's see if it triggers us in. And it's looking like it's not so good right now, but we'll see. Yep, so there's a stop out. It runs your stops, and you can see when the stops get run, uh, a lot of volume comes in there. So this would be a stop over the top of this. So that's our loss for the day. Let's see. So this gives us more context in the long direction. Stronger than this down bar. Well, let's see what, what we got here. I don't have any entry criteria that's showing up here, so... So here, we've got a lot of volume coming in up here. We've got um, high volume bars and high commitment bars. So it's almost like people suddenly got interested in this level up here again. Um, range bound kind of, yeah, I don't, I don't know that I, I see uh, any kind of context for an entry yet. There's context there. If we can get a nice little pullback. So I would probably take that as a uh, break under the low of that green candle. And it didn't trigger us in. So I would probably take a break under the low of this green candle. It looks like that did trigger us in. Yep. So that one got to 1R, which is uh, the point at which I usually trail to break even, 
uh, or at least half risk. Let's see where we go here. So we got down to yeah, just about one and a half hours. Uh, so not a great trade, just kind of a so-so trade. You might might have been able to take a target there, and it looks like then it comes back and tries to stop us out here. So we just kind of got some range stuff going on here around VWAP, and that's pretty typical sometimes. Uh, we got some long contacts though. Let's see if we can get any kind of low volume pullback. Should we get there, and you can uh, take it on a break above that. It's probably not going to end up being a great trade. Yeah, uh, so that would have been a stop if we took that. Let's see, we've got another break below with uh, strong low context. Let's see if we get a signal bar. That would probably be a decent signal bar right there to go short. And there we go. It's interesting that I can't really tell what's what happened there, but uh, you could have taken any of these as a short. Uh, let's see here. We got more range bound behavior here. You really just want to get into these on the strong trending situations. And that's always the, the difficult part is finding the, the trends instead of the, uh, the range-bound markets. Uh, it can work in range-bound as well, but you have to be willing to take smaller targets like one and a half R's or uh, even just one R sometimes. <clears throat> we have super high volume commitment here. Let's see what we got. I don't have an entry there. It doesn't tag the MA. So I would have to skip that one so far. This one could be taken on a break. Um, with this much, yeah, it's, it's questionable, but I, I could see taking this on a short under this green candle here. I would like to see that to be a, a lower volume bar, but uh, there it breaks. And gets to one R, one and a half R at least. Yep, there we go. So that's the end of the day. So you would have gotten to two R's there by the end of the day. Let's see what else we have. So super high volume candle the next morning. Super high volume coming in here. But low share commitment, uh, shares per trade commitment. You can see that. Like this is super super high volume. Uh, but the big orders just aren't there. So let's see what we got. No entries yet. So that would be an entry right here. If we break underneath the low of this candle, then that could be considered an entry. It's still kind of high volume for my preference, but uh, we've got the strongest candles in the downward direction, it seems. We're in a downtrend. I think I would have to take this as a uh, uh, short under the low of this candle. And it looks like we might break in there. And it's not taken off. We got just about a half hour, and that's about it. Okay, and then we stop out right there. Now we got high volume up. Small volume down. None of these are touching the MA, so I can't touch it yet. Uh, this could be taken as a long right here. Got some long commitment here. We're above the VWAP, touching, pulling back to touch the uh, moving average. I could take this as a long over this red candle. And it looks like it takes off a little bit there. Let's see. Looks like we might got a might have got to one R there at least, and there's probably second target or a first target there. So one, two, yeah, two R's there. We got some higher higher volume coming in here, and you can see the square shape of these candles kind of indicates resistance in a way. Okay, and 
No signals yet. So we've got some down commitment here. Low volume, low com lower commitment pullback here, back into the MA. Um, hmm, yeah, it, I guess I could take this as a short underneath the green candle here. Okay. So, yeah, that one would have gotten to target, I believe. Yeah, one and a half, two hours, something like that. Here is a pullback. It's not a pullback I like. We've, we've got a you know good context for a downtrend here. That downward movement throughout the day, and then we've got strong commitment here. Uh, I don't like how high these volumes are here, uh, or these commitments are. Uh, but this is a small share candle, so I could take this as a continuation below. And it looks like it did work out really well there. No signal there. It's not a green candle. This is a green coming back and touching the MA. It's not the kind that I like to see because it's not actually pulling back, really. But it could it could actually work. A lot of times they do. In this case, it goes a little ways. So we got some reversal interest coming in here. And yeah, so we've just kind of gotten some interest is kind of fading out here. Not a lot of people really interested in what's going on right now. Okay, so now we've got a break above. And so it broke above this red, which is a good signal for long, but uh, it's, uh, it's probably one that I would have missed because I don't really see a huge context here for going long. Now we're starting to see more of it. So if I got some more, and there's there's kind of an entry signal there. If we get a break above the red candle, doesn't look like we get it. So now we're broken back below. No entry so far. This would have been a good entry if that had been touching that MA, but it just wasn't, so I couldn't take that. That would have been a, a nice little reversal entry because you got these strong commitment bars coming in, tiny, tiny volume bar here with low commitment uh, pulling back. If it had touched the MA, I would have been able to take that, but uh, let's see what, where we go here. So here we've got um, kind of a climactic bar here, it seems like. Uh, try to get above it here and don't quite close on uh, strongly above it here. So then we got some reversal action, light volume, light commitment, uh, green bar. And I could take this as this breaks below here as a reversal type entry um, and see if that continues on. I don't know if it will or not. Looks like, eh, it looks like we're probably getting range bound. Yeah, so there's a stop out there. Now this is strong commitment coming in. No signals yet. It's one of the, the issues with these rigid rules is that this is a nice little entry here, but it's not touching the MA, so I'm not willing to take that at least not with my present set of rules. <clears throat> so this is a light volume pullback touching the MA, so I would take this on a low below that. I don't know if it's going to work or not. And it looks like it does. Looks like it got to one and a half to two hours. I'm not sure. Probably just one and a half hours there. <clears throat> you could take this as a break below the low of this green candle. Yeah, and there it goes. So that definitely would have been two R's. Then we've got reversal action going in here. A lot of some high volume bars, high commitment down here, high commitment in the opposite direction, high commitment and high volume, all in this kind of box. 
you can see that just volume has kind of picked up here and we've got some commitment uh, coming into this level too. And then we've got this big breakout. Huge breakout there. Now, if we can get an entry. No entry yet. Uh, this could be an entry as really more of a, a high volume bar than I would prefer to see. I'm not sure I would take that. I would prefer it to be more something like this candle instead of this candle, but uh, it may work. We'll see. Yeah, and it uh, looks like it probably will work. I've got some kind of, probably got to one R up there. Now this, so we've got this range, got some uh, resistance here, uh, context for going, uh, going short here in a small retracement candle um, on low commitment touching the MA. So this could have been a valid entry if I had seen it. Uh, looks like it will. Yeah, it's going to work there at least for one and a half hours. And that's going to be the end of the day. So let's see what else we've got the next day. Uh, green, red, green. Break under the green. It looks like that's a gap down. Wow, intraday gap. Um, no entries that I can see yet. <clears throat> Got some commitment coming into this area where this moving average catches up to us. Um, I could see this as a break above there, except for this is so high volume. Um, yeah, I'm just not sure. I, I, I would probably let this one go. We've got high volume, high commitment. Um, we've got a kind of a high commitment reversal here too, so I'm not sure that I see anything still. Um, you could possibly take this on a break below the green, since we've kind of got this, this move downward, pulling back into the moving average with a lighter volume green. Um, it does have high commitment, but uh, I, I would probably be, if I was in an aggressive mood, try to take that. Uh, let's see what it does here. It breaks below. Looks like it gets to 1R. Got a deeper retracement here. It's trying to stop us out. Uh, let's see here. I think we... If we hadn't, uh, if we had trailed to break even at 1R, then we would have just trailed out right here as we broke above here. Uh, if you'd kept your stop above the high of this, you'd still be in this. I don't know what it does from here. There is actually an entry signal right there. I don't really like that it's high commitment, but it is a small volume bar pulling back against the main trend. So that could have been a break entry there. That's a nice little trade. And we've got this strong move away. I like to see that context. No signals that I'm seeing here. Um, this could be actually a, so we've got a move above the moving average. Yeah, I, I don't think I would take this as a long. It might work, but I don't think I would take it as a long. No. <clears throat> yeah, and this, it tried to set up a little entry here, but it didn't touch the MA, so that wouldn't have been an entry for me. Sometimes they just don't set up right. And I'm okay with letting those go. So let's see here. We've got a deep pullback. We've got some kind of what I would consider stopping volume here. Uh, high volume, high commitment, square bar showing resistance. And you got this kind of like climactic sell off into the third standard deviation here. So I would consider this a stopping kind of volume, but um, no entries that I see yet. This could have been an entry right here. Light volume candle, 
um, pulling back into the MA, and so this would, buying over the the high of this candle would be an entry. I don't know if it works or not. Looks like it goes range bound for a while and then probably works there. Let me see. One. It's one R. Yeah, so it probably would have been a break even. So we've got some context going in the opposite direction now and down with the main trend. So a light volume pullback into the MA here, break under this low would be a valid entry. Now we've got some high interest bars coming in here on low volume. Um, I think I would still take these on a break below. It's iffy. I don't like all that commitment coming in, but... Yeah, so I think at this point I would have canceled my orders. So there's some more context for the downside. Small light volume pullback into the MA on the green candle. I could probably see selling this short on the break of the low. I don't think it's broken yet. No. Might be just about to break there. Oh, and I didn't even notice this. And actually, let me get this volume profile off of here so it's a little easier to see. There we go. Maybe you can see the candles a little bit better there. Um, yeah, so yeah, I don't see an entry here yet. Strong volume on lower commitment. But we've got some commitment in the downward direction in these three candles. I would really love to see... Okay, so we've got I mean, just not having any entries here. I don't think this one touched. Nope. So you see how this was all higher volume over here, and now we're just really tiny candles all through here. Starting to get a little bit more interest going on, maybe. Okay, so we've got strong context to the downside. If I could get a pullback that touched the MA, no. Nope. So here, I see that as kind of resistance because it's a squarish candle pulling back into the MA. Um, and I could see selling this on the break of that low just because it's a narrow range candle and offers a good risk to reward. Let's see. Nope, no entry there. Looks like we're going back to VWAP. I see no entries to the long side or the short side here. That one almost set up as long, but it didn't quite touch the MA, so no entry there. I could kind of see selling this short on a break under that candle, but I would probably want a better setup. We're about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, so I, I could see this being a sell uh, under the, the low of that green. Nope, no entry there. And so there we go into the close. Looks like we had an entry right here for the long side. This one would have been a presumptive entry right over here, breaking above there. I, I was uh, preoccupied with the short context here, but yeah, it looks like there would have been one, two entries to the long side there if I had been in the frame of mind to take them. Uh, let's see if there are any others that I missed. It could, yeah, not really that one. So that would be the close. Let's see what we got the next day here. Sometimes I just miss a lot of these. So there's there's a good uh, entry signal right here. Uh, strong down, uh, smaller volume going into the moving average, lighter commitment as we touch the moving average. I would take this as a short. And so that would have been two R's. Let's see here. 
This could be a valid short as well. Um, it's kind of a wide, uh, wide range candle, so I'm not really that interested in it. It's not a good risk to reward. So there is a decent sell signal right there. We got kind of stronger down volume, not, not really decisive. Um, and then we've got kind of a lighter volume pullback here. I could see selling short on a break below that candle. And then that one as well. Looks like it breaks and then stops us out. Okay, so where are we going now? Could be a signal above this red bar. Um, it's just too wide, so I probably wouldn't have taken it. Uh, let's see here. This would have been a valid buy signal above the this candle. Uh, as we pull back, continue, pull back, break above, I could see taking that one. Uh, this to me looks like climactic type of stopping volume here. So I, I'm kind of at this point thinking short. I'm not sure. Oh, and we go make new highs there over this pivot. I don't really see an entry here that I could have taken to the long side. Here is one entry to the long side. Take that. And it looks like it's going to stop out. Yeah, this one could be a valid entry as well above the high of this red candle. Okay, so we've got some strong context to the downside. Let's see if we get a light volume pull back into that moving average, then you can take this as a short below that candle. Yeah, nice trade there. It's these kind of trades that really pay for all the chop that sometimes you get in the range bound. Um, when you get the two plus R's, uh, our trades, these bring your averages up so that uh, you really offset the um, uh, the chop that sometimes happens during the middle of the day, uh, late morning, middle of the day, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, so it looks like we had a couple of stops today. I can't remember, a couple of winners maybe, and then we had a nice little entry right there. Um, let's see here. Back up to VWAP. Didn't see any real signals here. You could have taken this maybe as a break above the high of this candle. But I don't know that I see enough context here for a long to have taken that. And if you notice here, all these candles are tiny candles. They're all light volume commitment candles. Um, so I, this is saying, to me, this is saying, this is the move, this is the pullback. So um, it's indicating to me that we're going to continue lower at this point. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I'm reading. So touch VWAP there. Kind of like, uh, looks like maybe a, a stopping power there. We'll see. We got the sell off. If we had a light volume pullback, that touch the MA, it looks like we don't get it. <clears throat> this one could be valid, but it's just a wider range candle than I'd probably be interested in. But it would have worked, it looks like. 
There's another, this is a valid entry, but it's also a wide candle, so it's not as attractive. But either of these two greens and this one as well uh, could have been valid entries below a brick below those. Um, but yeah, because they're so wide, I would probably have to only take um, target at one and a half hours or something like that. And it looks like this worked really well, um, especially if you were still holding from this entry way up here. Um, you know, you could have taken a two R target and held some, just kind of pieced it out during during the rest of the move here. This could have been a valid entry below the low of this candle. Probably could have taken it on a low break of this candle as well. Mostly because we're seeing the, you know, this is the trend right now. Uh, the volumes commitments coming in on the downside, strong volume bars on the downside, and kind of lighter volume coming up here, then a kind of stopping power candle right here. And then we got a strong, strongish break to the downside, really strong break here. So this would be a valid entry for me. Break below, yep. Yeah. You see, we're walking along this second standard deviation line right now, as well as the moving average. A lot of times you'll notice stocks will walk between two of the standard deviation lines. Um, a lot of times it's the first standard deviation and the second standard deviation. So this is getting kind of extended. It's, it's a really strong trend. Uh, it doesn't mean it can't continue, uh, but um, it is kind of a, an extreme move. There we got a reversal, strong volume, lower than average commitment, but there's a lot of volume happening right here. I'd probably just need some kind of breakout above here or below here, or a small candle in the as a counter trend move to give me some context for an entry. So this is a smaller candle, but it's breaking above. Um, hmm. It's tough. You could take this either way. You could take this as a break above this red or as a break below this green. Um, we're in a downtrend. I would kind of aim toward the trend continuation. However, uh, we've got a lot of volume that happened here, so that's kind of arguing for stopping the uh, move in the, in the midterm. So I would, I would be okay with either way, actually. Let's see what we got. Looks like we get a, a small candle here uh, that doesn't break the high. And then we get a break below that. This is actually a valid continuation trigger right here. I don't know if it goes or not, but there we go. This would be a valid continuation trigger as well. And that one would have stopped out. Or it could have possibly been a trail to break even at 1R, but uh, it probably would have been a stop out, honestly, because I don't think it really quite made it far enough to where I would have trailed the stop yet. So it's the next day. We'll do one more day here and see where we get. I don't see anything here yet. I'm not really seeing the context yet. Uh, maybe on a long break above this candle. Yep, yeah. looks like it does trigger in. One, probably two hours, one and a half, two hours there. So we've got a valid entry signal here if you break above the high of that. It looks like we're not going to. This is also a valid uh, short signal as a reversal. And so it looks like it triggered in. I don't know if it's going to go or not, but uh, yeah, you could have taken either one of these, a break above here or a break below here as a reversal. And it looks like the reversal worked. This was a valid entry. It's a high commitment, so I don't like it as well, but uh, it would have been a valid entry on a break below there. 
and it looks like that one worked to to two R's. So had a couple of opportunities there for uh, trade. Now we got this little candle, um, so a so strong up bar, some kind of stopping, uh, some resistance here. I don't know. I don't know that I'd be ready to take this on a reversal yet, but it looks like it's going to reverse. So that you could take that as a, an entry above that. And it looks like that would have been a probably a trail break even as it got to one R. So let's see here. No real context going on here. Uh, you could take this as a short below the uh, below that green candle. Looks like that would have been a stop out. So we got some commitment here. Not seeing entries. You could have taken a break above this candle, but it just didn't happen. And this one's way extended away from the MA, so I wouldn't have taken that. This one I could have taken. And it looks like if I had, it would stop out, depending on where I placed the stop there, if it had been below here or not. This one could have been a valid entry as well. Looks like that one would have worked well. This one is a valid entry. That's a stop. There's a valid entry on the short side. If it breaks below the low of that. Got some context here for a short. And this could be a valid entry break below that. Yeah, so there we go. And that one would have one would have worked there. Um, there's an entry candle to the short side again. It looks like that one worked at least to one and a half hours. This is so light volume right in here. This is. Um, uh, you know, late. It's getting to be afternoon lunchtime, so not a lot going on. This is kind of range-bound behavior. So there's a high commitment bar coming in. So I would need a low volume pullback into the MA. And yeah, not seeing it yet. More range bound behavior. And yeah, this is just zigzagging back and forth. I need a break below this before I'm really that interested in it, or a break above at one. So here we've got a little base pattern happening. If it breaks below the low of this, that would be interesting to me. Yeah, and it looks like it does. Yeah. Okay, so this touched the MA, you can see here, and it's a light volume, low, low commitment candle. And I just noticed how it was kind of basing like this did. So when that happens, uh, a break below that would be, you know, a signal that the range trend might be, might be ending. So let's see here. Yeah, that would have worked really well. This one could have been uh, long above here, but it's kind of, it's a high commitment candle, so I don't really like it that well. Uh, this one I like better. It's a little bit higher volume. I'd like to see more something along these lines instead, but uh, let's see, it's 240 as well, so that's probably not something I would take anyway because it's just too close to closing time. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, that's kind of a quick intro to my... Uh, new little system that I've been trading intraday, um, basically price volume analysis. Um, I'll probably do a few more of these. It uh, looks like we got to Thursday the 29th would be the day that uh, I'd start next video. So we might go over that uh, next time I have a chance to do one of these videos if you guys are interested. So thanks. I'll talk to you later.